So in the last video, we worked on marking up um, a document, a, a design in Photoshop with HTML5 elements. Now, if you were in class doing this, you would show your group, see what everyone else did, um, see if you all agree, adjust what you've done, and then you're going to show me what you did so I can have a look. So um, that would be a breaking point. You, you can keep going while you're waiting for me to get around to you, but you'll put your name up on the board and let me know you're ready. For, your group is ready for me to just come and check their outlines. So the next thing you're going to do is define a site in Dreamweaver, um, which I cover in a previous video. Create a new, um, and it says XHTML page. Hold on a minute. Okay. I've corrected that. So create a new HTML5 page, which I show you how to do in a previous video, and view the page in code view. You don't need design view for this. So when I say this next part, then code an HTML5 page based off the layout as demonstrated in the lecture that we're doing right now. You may get help from your group as you code the page. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So you can see what this is like. Now when I talk about this, I'm not talking about any CSS. We haven't covered that yet in the semester. So I don't expect you to do that. Um, and you're going to see here how I represent images. I don't expect you to call in any images. Um, it, this is strictly a text markup right now. And we're not worried about how do we make it look the way it looks. We don't worry about that. I want you to think about what the information is that's being represented and how it all groups together. So with that, um, I'm going to reference um, my, uh, my design here the whole time. And I'm going to get rid of these guys. And I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause this and just create my HTML5 uh, document here. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've, I'm ready to hit create HTML, HTML5, create and I'm going to save my document, make sure it's in my site, my root folder here, and we will. I'm going to call this exercise um, 2, and um, then I'm going to go to code view, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to be able to reference my design and um, I'm going to not flip back and forth between the two. I, I will occasionally do it, but um, just for the sake of coding, it will drive you nutty if I do this um, as many times as I'm going to need to. So I have the design in a different screen, and what I would recommend for you is to have that your design in a different screen with all the markup on it, or um, print it out so that you don't um, have to deal with um, with it in any other way. All right. Um, and oh, so you can see it the whole time you're coding. Sorry, I'm moving things around and talking. That's never good, right? OK, so here we go. Um, we're going to start with that div that is um, that has an ID of wrap. And then, OK, so I opened up my div with an ID of wrap. And I'm closing my div. The next thing I'm going to do is indent one. Why am I doing this? Because it's easier to view the code, and I would like you to do that. And here, um, I'm going to do my header. And inside of the header, the header doesn't have an ID. I've got an H1, and it is Ben and Jerry's. Now, I know in my design, um, I have an actual image up there, but right now I don't care. I, that, it's the Ben and Jerry's, and I can actually, sorry, I can go one more step here and say Ben and Jerry's logo. Now, you'll notice that the and sign looks weird. That's because it's actually a symbol, and there's a couple ways to figure out how to get the proper code in here. So I'm going to go in Dreamweaver to insert HTML, special characters, and I can go to here, and I might be able to find the ampersand. Um, I know what it is, but I just want you to be able to look it up. Hold on one moment. Okay, so um, we're going to learn a little bit about cheating now. <laughs> it's not, it wasn't in that table, or at least I didn't see it. So I'm going to go to design view just for one moment and type an ampersand. Now when we go back to code view, there it is. This is the symbol code for that. So 
I don't know if HTML5 still requires that, so we're going to go ahead and put that in. We'll find out when we validate if that's good or not. We used to need to do that, so we're going to do that. It doesn't want you to just type that symbol in on its own. It needs it to be coded in. Okay, so that's my header section. Let me just uh, pull the design over here so we can see what the heck is going on. Um, I have div ID of wrap, div ID of wrap, and that's going to wrap the whole document. Notice that the box goes around the whole document. So that's going to end just before the, bo the closing body tag. And the body tag and the HTML tag and head tag and all that were discussed in your reading. Um, then we have the header area. That's what I just coded up with the H1. And I'm symbolizing this image by saying Ben and Jerry's logo. Now, in all honesty, I'm really, if I were to code this, I would really leave that text there. And there's a way to get the image to show up and have the text hide. And that way the browser, the search engine reads the, the text and the viewer sees the image and it's a nice thing because everybody gets what they want. All right, so this next section here is um, the nav, and it has an ID of main nav. So we're going to do that next. All right. Main nav, camel case, no space. And before I put anything inside the main nav, I'm going to close it. Remember that slash right here is always your closing element. And then inside that, I'm going to put in there an H2. And my H2 is just going to say um, main. Now, this is not an idea. I mean, this is actual text that you will see on the page for the time being. If I were actually coding this in CSS, with CSS and making a real design, there's a way to hide this text from the viewer, but um, the screen readers want it. and um, and ver there's various reasons you'll see in the outline why we need it. If I don't put this H, if I don't put an H of some sort in here, this section will be untitled in our document outline. Um, the document outline is also referenced in your reading for this week. So we want each section to have a title, ideally. So this is how we get it. Um, so we have main navigation. And um, then we have the unordered list with a bunch of list items. So what we're going to do is UL to start the unordered list. This is also discussed in your reading. And then I'm going to indent one more level. And um, when I look at, so I'm doing that based off of this section here. And I want to know the names of these. Do I expect you to type in the names of, of anything that's there on your design? Yes, there's not a lot of text. So um, we have home, our company, our products, scoop shops, fun stuff, gift shop. So I'm going to do that. Do not give me a document that just has a bunch of meaningless allies. I want to see what's actually in there, like it was really coded. So what I'm going to do is just um, type these in, home our company, our products. Now in the real world, hopefully you have something you can copy and paste from, but this is just a JPEG that I took. Fun stuff. And I will not make you watch me type this whole page, um, but just this one section will do this. So then I'm going to select the thing that's going to be a list item. On a Mac, press Command T. On a PC, press Control T. And then this is a list item, LI. Enter, and there it's an LI. So select Command T or Control T, LI. That's my tag that I want, or my element. Enter, enter, and it's opening and closing it for me. L oh, whoops, if you forget the Command T, you're in trouble. LI, enter, enter, Command T or Control T, LI, enter, enter. And this is a really nice way to not forget to close things and to also um, have a better shot at the proper syntax. So it's really nice in helping you speed things up. Okay, so that is this section. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing for this section. So. What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to take this, since I'm fortunate enough to have something very similar, I'm going to copy it, 
and paste it. And now I'm going to pause while I put in the unique content for this. You know, the unique words, the unique ID that I can't see unless I screen this way back, the side nav. Um, I'm going to do all that and then come back. Okay, so now we have our second navigation. And this is the side nav. So um, let me screen this back for a second. I know you can't see me screening it back, but um, the unique out, the unique things about this, it's got an ID of side nav, and it's got a different H2 side navigation than up here where we had main nav and main navigation. <clears throat> then um, let me screen in here. Each one of my ULs, our values, our history, that's all typed in here. Okay. 